Well, I'm on a bit of a roll here. Another day, another day back in front of the camera. So I was out walking Jake this morning and having a think to myself, notice how different the light is on me today sitting here. And that just goes to show out every day is different with light. So whatever day you go out with your camera, the light's different. So that's one of the reasons why it's a waste of time when you're learning to keep asking people what their settings are because every, every day is different, the morning, the evening, the afternoon. When you set up to do long exposures, you take an exposure reading first of all to do your long exposure and by the time that you've started the long exposure and finished the long exposure, a cloud's come over or the sun's gone in and it all changes. So photography is all about that, it's all about change. So I went out for a walk with Jake this morning and I was thinking about the video I did yesterday and a couple of questions that I answered. And we've been through extraordinary times over the last couple of years and as I said, the media just bang on about it every day. They ask the government the same questions, there's the government haters, there's the government likers, and I'm not going to get too much into that. It's like, you know, it just, just goes on and on and on. But what I will say is this, no one asked the questions of all the great things that have happened during this pandemic. And I've just been out, one of my local coffee shops, my favorite coffee shop, been their coffee shop in Allerton Road. It's closed at the moment because of COVID ironically, um, because one of the members of staff got COVID, so it's closed at the moment. And then there's a p coffee shop in Penny Lane and that's closed as well because of one of the members have got um, COVID. So I've walked along the road and there's another one called Scouse and there's another one called Derrick's. And these places have grown out of the pandemic. They weren't there before the pandemic and there's another place called Plattsville Bakehouse. This guy started baking. He's actually, I think he's a Hillwater mountain climber, mountain leader. And the whole idea was to start his new business as a mountain leader and a mountain walker or, so, or something like that. And what happened is the pandemic started and he couldn't. So he started baking bread for his street at home, which is Plattsville Road. And he, I think he was doing it for free, first of all. And then people said, your bread's really, really good. We'll buy it. So then the people started buying his bread off him. And then it got so big that he's now opened a bakery and now he's supplying a lot of the independent coffee shops in Liverpool, which I think is absolutely fantastic. The other thing is in Liverpool, all the independent coffee shops have come together during this pandemic. They all talk to each other online on social. They all support each other. And a lot of the other eateries and places that have been going through the pandemic have supported each other through the pandemic online, on social media. And I think it's fantastic. And the other thing is there's some photographers that have also grown. There's the photographers that have been online moaning and groaning about how the pandemic killed their business and fin finished their business. And there's others that have just gone on and found and diversified and done something new. You know, in the forces, you're taught to adapt and evolve. And a lot of people have adapted and evolved. I don't want to make this a negative um, video. I really don't. And I'm going to try my hardest not to. But everyone moans and groans. And in the end, we, I think we all get touched by it slightly. I've taken my time during this time and um, luckily okay I'm retired but I go out for a walk um, and when we were only allowed to go out for a walk for an hour I went out for a walk for a lot longer than that and at the end of the day even in these times you're allowed to have an hour to yourself out in the fresh air now if you didn't take that opportunity and take that chance you've missed out trust me you've missed out because it is a time to go for a walk and if you don't really like going outside much and I know there's people that don't walk around the block take it one street at a time Start walking and explore your local neighborhood. I know this, I've said this probably before in videos, but explore your local area, explore your local neighborhood, go one street at a time and then go a mile, two miles, five miles, six miles, 10 miles. You'll be surprised how far you can walk. If you go out shopping for the day, you'll walk three or four miles, maybe four miles. Some people even walk further. But some people walk miles and miles and miles when they go shopping around town, but they won't go out for a walk themselves. Walking's very therapeutic. Stage two of going out for a walk is taking your camera with you or if you've usually got an iPhone or you've got a phone on you. Sorry to mention iPhones, people that hate them, but um, you've usually got a phone on you. So go out with a camera or your phone or take a camera out with you, go for these walks and just see what there is to photograph. As a guy, I know him as Esco Williams. Um, he's a, well, I knew him as a singer. I photographed him as a singer at a couple of events in Liverpool. And I noticed at the beginning of the pandemic, he's got a Instagram account, which I'll put below called Didi Shutter. And he goes out probably every day, I should think, and photographs Liverpool, the people of Liverpool, things he sees in Liverpool. He's a ground, I think his account's grown to about 11,000 followers. I haven't checked it for a little while. Um, in a very short space of time, he's prolific now. He photographs nearly every day. He photographs all sorts of different people. He goes all around Liverpool, all different areas. I noticed he was in my area the other day 
and his work's getting better and better and better. And from someone that used to be a singer to diversify into photography, I've noticed now that some of his work's been getting into books and magazines, etc. That's absolutely brilliant, you know. And why is he getting that sort of feedback? Why is he getting that following? Why is he getting in books and magazines? I'll tell you why, it's because he goes out every day and practices his craft. One of the things that's lacking in photography is people want to get somewhere in photography but don't take any photographs. And the photographs they do take aren't that good. And how do you get better at something? You do it all the time. You go out every day and you take photographs. I know this sounds a bit weird for people that love macro photography and tabletop photography indoors, but go out. You don't have to stay in and do macro photography. It's summer now in the UK, if you live in the UK. So there's flowers out. Take your camera out and go and take some photographs of flowers. Practice your macro photography outside. You'll be surprised. It's a big wide world out there and the inspiration comes. Not only that, you're gonna bump into people and talk to people and become sociable. Oh, I don't really like being sociable a lot of the time. I hate people, but um, at the end of the day, I, I got out this morning, bumped into three or four people walking the dog. We had a chat. One of them was a photographer, so we was talking about photography. And then a couple few ideas came in my head. And, it, and it's just the way it works. You know, it, the internet honestly can sometimes not inspire you. Actually, it can actually be worse because you can actually look at all the amazing photographs online and think, oh, I'm just not that good. Why well, don't know why I bother? Well, I'll tell you why you bother because you, if you've started, you've got something inside you. Anyone can be fantastic at anything. It's all about time and effort. I used to teach learning to see workshops and I can't even tell you how many hundreds of people came on the workshops and they listened to all the advice and then off they went and ignored it. Uh, I think I said the other day, the people that did take the advice got somewhere, they actually really did get somewhere. And there's a few others now that I see that did take the advice that are, have got some lovely accounts, they've won awards, they've won photographic competitions, they're getting their work out there, they're listening. That's basically what my channel's all gonna be about. And if, if you don't, if no one wants to listen and take, I don't care really at the end of the day, but I do try and give good advice. As someone said, it's always no, no bullshit advice. Yeah, it is, and it, I am just gonna be me. I'm not gonna rush off and get a cup of coffee and show you how I make coffee. I'm not gonna do intros and outros on my videos. It's just gonna be me talking. I have a small problem. I, I went out today and went for a walk and I thought I must do some of these walking along the prom or out with Jake, etc., in the morning because it's, it's not in front of a brick wall and everyone's trying to look at my brick wall behind my head and see if I've got the camera straight, good luck. <laughs> um, the trouble is when I'm out with what Jake for a walk, I have to keep a bit of an eye on Jake. So I don't want to try and ruin my dog walks by trying to make videos. So then I'll, I end up coming home and doing this. In theory, I could go out again and make another video, but then I have to take a tripod and a microphone and everything else. So I'm gonna fit it in where I can. So I'm standing negative now. Um, yeah, so uh, at the beginning of all this, one of my upsetting parts of the lockdown, which is quite surprising to a lot of people, was the bluebells were just about to come out in Speak Hall Woods. The lockdown came on, and for quite a while you could still walk in Speak Hall Woods, and then suddenly they locked all the gates, locked it all off, and you couldn't go in there. So I never actually got to photograph the bluebells. And I was very, very let down by that. And then I started notice by doing my other 365s. By going out every day, I noticed how the seasons changed. And one of the things I noticed about this winter was how everything died back. And when I say that, when normally a hedge just dies back and you can see the hedge, these hedge, the hedges nearly died completely. In fact, I thought, cool, we're not gonna have any growth this year. Well, I noticed that the, it, grew, it died back so much, the bushes, the hedges, all the vegetation died back. I thought, where's it all going? Now summer's come and we've had a bit of rain and water. I have never seen growth like it is at the moment. The trees are sprouting, stuff's growing everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. And this is the sort of stuff you notice when you go out and about. So if you don't go out and about, you don't notice this stuff. And that's just with vegetation and everything else. And um, going out and about teaches you lots about the environment you live in. You also learn new things about the environment you live in. Well, we just went out, Jane and I just went for a coffee. I went, as I say, we had to go to another coffee shop. Um, and we walked past another place that used to be a barber's that's now becoming a coffee shop. And I think to myself, well, there's another new place. In fact, Allerton Road was dying off at one time years ago and everyone was complaining there wasn't enough in it and it was all turning into eateries. And I thought, well, Brick Lane does okay in London. Brick Lane and the bagel shop and everything else. And I love Brick Lane and a lot of other people love Brick Lane. So what's wrong with Allerton Road becoming the new Brick Lane in Liverpool? I don't understand what the problem is really. So 
going back to photography, there's an idea, you see. Get out, take photographs of all the local coffee shops and see what's grown and see what's grown out of the pandemic. I know in Liverpool there's a lot of people, I can't remember the na name, so I'm not going to try and remember while I'm doing this, but there's a lot of people that have started new food businesses in Liverpool. Um, and the other day I think they were showcased on Google Pixel. And there's a lot of photographers that have um, started new work and everything else during this time as well. So, but you can't do that sat indoors looking at Twitter, looking at Facebook and getting down and arguing with people. It's just a bloody waste of time, honestly. So my advice for the day is go out and take some photographs. Go out for a walk, go out and get some fresh air, go and speak to people, bump into people. And soon, go into coffee shops, sit with your camera, chat to other people, get used to other creatives, meet up with the other creat creatives again, share your ideas. I think someone once said to me, photographers are quite selfish and they're quite lonely and they're quite lazy, whereas videographers need other people to be able to create videos. And, and the reason that is, is because you can't create great videos on your own or great films on your own. You know, you almost need a director of photography, a cameraman, a sound man. You need all these people to collaborate to make this stuff and a writer. Well, really, it's the same with photography. If you bounce off each other when you go out and you have a coffee, then you get more creative. I know I've sat in coffee shops, pubs and bars all over this country and in some cases all over the world. I've sat in Venice with people that are photographers on a workshop talking about photography and they get inspired for listening to professional photographers talk but the professional photographers get inspired as well. Trust me they do because we all have bad days, we all have down days. You know, people do go through depression and everything else. And I don't want to talk about that. I, I, one of the things is, I will tell you one thing. A friend of my Lee Glasgow has diversified from being a photographer. to I think it's a psychotherapist or a counselor. I don't really know. But he's gone from a photographer to counseling or uh, something like that. But he recommended the other day a really, really good book called Cavemen and Polar Bears. And I recommend it to you and I'll put the link below. Cavemen and Polar Bears is an absolutely amazing book. And it says everything I actually thought about people feeling down, depression and everything else. It's, it's how I felt about it. But to actually see it written in a book, it's absolutely unbelievable. And I've always said that the biggest problem with depression is most of the people I know, and I don't want to go down into this too much, but unfortunately most of the people that I know that have committed suicide never talked about it. They just did it. And that is very, very sad. But it also means that if everyone's just talking about depression all the time, then it isn't helping anyone to be honest with you, because the people that do this don't listen anyway. Uh, that's the way I see it, and I could be wrong, so don't hate me for it. But at the end of the day, we have all got responsibility, and if we worked with each other and noticed things like that, it is helpful. But all this shit going on at the moment isn't helping at all whatsoever, and everyone talking about it, even me just then, I didn't want to do that, and I just did. But just going on about it makes everyone else think, oh shit, you know what I mean? And then you start feeling a bit low yourself, but for me, in the last, because I haven't just been involved in this in the pandemic. I had a stroke, I had my gallbladder removed. So I've been in recovery for since 2008, December 2018. So when, when the pandemic came, I was supposed to be going out in 2020 and get used to being around people again, shopping, etc., which I still struggle with. And then this came, so I had two more years up to and now almost of not going out so much and everything else. So trust me, my walks when i go out for a walk with the dog that's my best time of day that's my hour to myself even if you're working now even if you've gone back to work and you work you're entitled to an hour to yourself if you've got a busy life and a big busy work schedule and you've got kids and everything at home doesn't matter whether you're male female or whatever take that one hour for yourself go for a walk it doesn't matter whether you've not got a dog or you get a dog get a dog get a dog is a good idea to get a dog but Take that one hour for yourself, go out for a walk, take some photographs, enjoy life, enjoy that one hour to yourself. Just go for a wonder. It's amazing how good that makes you feel. And it may not do the first time or the second time, but go for a walk, go further. As I say, take your camera, take photographs. Check out Diddy Shutter's work. Buy Cavemen and Polar Bears, it's an absolutely amazing book. I'll put the link below and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a great weekend.